Hi, I'm Chad Smith, the co-author of the third revised edition of Orlick East Material Requirements Planning, due out in the spring of 2011. Today I'm going to take you through an introduction to demand-driven MRP, or DDMRP. It's a planning solution to today's complex planning and supply chain scenarios. I would definitely recommend watching our first video, Fixing the Planning Problem, before you watch this video. So what exactly is demand-driven MRP? Demand-driven MRP is a multi-echelon solution for today's increasingly complex planning and execution scenarios. It takes the remaining relevant aspects of traditional MRP and DRP tactics and combines it with the pull-based or demand-driven approaches of lean and the theory of constraints, as well as introduces revolutionary new innovations. As we discussed in our video fixing the planning problem, traditional MRP tactics and tools tend to create a bimodal distribution where items either tend to be overstocked or understocked. DDMRP allows companies to get out of that constant oscillation between too little and too much and all of the penalties and costs that come with that oscillation. It allows companies to live in that high return on capital employed zone that is so critical to sustainable profitable growth and early adopters are getting results. To see these companies staggering results, watch the video fixing the planning problem. To get your environment to DDMRP, a process has to be followed. The process is robust, innovative, and it's also intuitive. The process is detailed in the new Orlicky's Material Requirements Planning, and there are five sequential components. The first three can be characterized as a design and modeling phase, and the design and model should not remain static. These steps should be reiterated frequently as circumstances dictate. The first three components are strategic inventory positioning, buffer profiles and levels, and dynamic adjustments. The fourth component is actually planning and supply order generation logic, and finally the last component is highly visible and collaborative execution. Now let's talk about the first component, strategic inventory positioning. Most planning personnel and the tools that they use are constantly seeking the answers to two questions, how much and when. These two questions can cause huge disagreements and friction inside many companies. Typically, finance wants less inventory, while sales may clamor for more. In reality, these questions are secondary in nature. The primary question to be answered about inventory is where. Where in our chain of dependencies does it make sense to hold inventory? Without answering this question first, the organization sets itself up for constant dissatisfaction with regard to its inventory performance. So how do we effectively answer the question where? There are six factors that must be considered in combination, and these factors touch on a variety of cross-functional concerns, thus answering the question where is not something that any one person or function should do. The answer is strategic in nature, and a design must be carefully crafted in order to dampen variability, compress lead times, and better leverage working capital. While it starts out at a strategic level, it must be carried all the way down to the operational level. One key distinction about DDMRP is its use of something called ASR lead time. ASR lead time is the longest unprotected sequence in the bill of material for a part. Here we have an environment with four unique end items, each with a distinct bill of material. The shaded part numbers are parts that are stocked including each end item. The lines represent the longest unprotected sequence in each bill of material. It is important to note that this is not the manufacturing lead time, nor is it the cumulative lead time. It is the ASR lead time, and the ASR lead time can shift as different positions in bills are stocked. Traditional MRP systems do not have the ability to see this type of lead time. Now that we've identified the longest unprotected path for each bill, we can look across the bills and look for common or shared items that lie on that path. Typically, this look across is called a matrix bill of material, and when combined with the ASR lead time concept, it will show us where to place stock buffers that compress lead time and leverage inventory across many points. We can't emphasize this point enough. Failure to properly position inventory is a huge source of waste for most manufacturing and supply chain companies. That is why we tell people we are looking to move from the world of push and promote to the world of position and pull. The next part of the DDMRP solution involves setting buffer profiles and levels. Now that we know where to position inventory, we have to set and manage inventory levels. Levels will be managed by the use of an intuitive color coding system. Light blue for too much, green for okay, yellow for rebuild, red for alert or warning, and finally dark red for stock out. 
Items are grouped into what we call buffer profiles by like attributes with regard to lead times, whether they are made, bought, or distributed, how variable they are, and finally whether there are significant order multiples involved with them. These globally managed group part traits are then combined with key individual item attributes. This combination of group and individual traits creates a unique buffer level and zonal distribution for each item. There can be a lot behind buffer sizing and zone definition. Remember, this is just an overview. The next step in DDMRP are the dynamic adjustments to buffers. Obviously, both global and individual traits can change over time, naturally or with decisions that we make. Let's deal with the natural changes first. DDMRP uses something called recalculated adjustments to allow the buffer of an item to flex with the rate of consumption as it changes. This recalculation occurs across a user-defined rolling horizon. Next, DDMRP uses something called planned adjustments for things that we know will occur or plan to occur. An obvious example is seasonality. Planning for seasonality flexes the buffers in order to match market requirements. Additionally, for product introduction and deletion, ramp up or ramp down curves can be created. The next aspect of DDMRP is the actual planning logic and mechanisms. Let's bring in four parts and their respective buffer levels. Additionally, for each part we have provided you with two points of data. The open arrow represents the available stock position and the closed arrow represents the current on hand position. Now supply generation is based on something called the available stock equation. The available stock equation is on hand plus on order or open supply minus any unfulfilled demand that is due today or in the past plus any qualified future spikes. So how are spikes qualified? Well each item has an order spike horizon, typically one ASR lead time, and an order spike threshold. Sales orders that trip the threshold within the horizon are added to the available stock equation. Now let's bring in a sample planning screen. As you can see, two parts require no additional supply as their available stock equations are in the green zone, while the other two require additional supply as they are in the yellow zone. The color coding for both available stock and on hand allows planners to quickly find and focus on the items that need their attention, both from a planning perspective as well as an execution perspective. In DDMRP, when supply is launched for parent items, there is what's called a decoupled explosion. In this example, the yellow positions represent stocked positions. A decoupled explosion stops the bill of material at any stocked position. In this case, the end item's bill of material is turned into three independent planning horizons. Traditional MRP was and is designed to make everything dependent, meaning that explosion progresses through an entire bill of material. Once again, this is only an introductory video, but this distinction is of huge implication for schedule stability and visibility for planners. The final component of DDMRP is highly visible and collaborative execution. The biggest change with DDMRP is that it moves companies and supply chains out of the default mode of priority management by due date and into the world of priority management through the use of highly visible real-time buffers. These buffers use a general color reference and a discrete percentage remaining reference. When we use these buffers, we get a different view of priority than we would by strictly using due date. Notice in this example that the order that is due the latest is actually the highest priority. These buffer views should be available both for current inventory situations as well as projected status over a user-defined horizon, typically one ASR lead time. DDMRP also incorporates something called a material synchronization alert for synchronization issues between parent item demand and child open supply. Typically the material synchronization alerts are triggered when there are quantity or date changes with either parent or child order numbers. Additionally, DDMRP has an innovative and highly visible way to track critical non-stocked items. In most MRP systems, planners lose visibility to these items until they are late. Lead time alerts prompt planners to follow up with these critical part orders in advance of them being due. I hope you enjoyed this brief overview of DDMRP logic and tactics. In Orlicky's Material Requirements Planning, the third revised edition, we have over 150 pages and 100 plus figures and illustrations dedicated to just explaining and defining the blueprint for the future of MRP and DRP logic. You can find the book at Amazon.com. Just search Orlicky's.
If you want to know more about DDMRP concepts, come see us at the Demand Driven Institute. We offer a variety of DDMRP workshops, online training and certification, and even on-site consultation. Also, please consider joining the growing demand-driven community. Follow us on LinkedIn, Twitter, and Facebook. This is Chad Smith wishing you good luck on your demand-driven journey.